so I am seven years old. My name is Nolene Skinner, I'm Alyssa's mother and we live on Gumbangi country. The Gumbangi people have lived in Coffs Harbour for hundreds of years. We had a lot of our families grow up on the old camp in Little Humpies. It's a beautiful country and that's why I brought my kids up here as well. I think it's very important that all Aboriginal kids have support from their families, from their communities, but we need to be able to access services to ensure that our kids have the chance to be able to look after their health and make sure they're, they're healthy and fit and always happy, you know, that's the bottom line that, for me, that kids have to be happy. I know with our mob, diabetes is a big issue. My sister just got diagnosed with it about two years ago and my father died of a heart attack at 52 and so did his brothers at young ages as well. I suppose if we just sort of knew things these days, like we could have known 20 years ago, it could have been a different story, do you know what I mean? Or the, the services, the support that's out there now for Aboriginal health, that's why I need to get on to my kids' health and, and make sure that they're healthy. And I suppose I need to be a role model as well. That's why I'm trying to do the best I can with my health. You know, I don't want my kids losing me at 52. Daily Sister Girls started in 2009. We're an Aboriginal women's group for women who worked or studied because we couldn't access services through the Aboriginal Medical Service through the day. So we do boot camp, we do circuit, we do running. At the start of the term we have health checks. The nurse comes from the Aboriginal Medical Service and that way we monitor ourselves as well. And we motivate each other, we encourage each other and I think that's the thing that keeps us all going. We have just started a new program which involves our kids and it's about our mothers or the aunties or the grandmothers educating our kids the importance of health and make sure we tap into other services around town. I think we've made a step forward and we're getting there, slowly but getting there. We're making a difference. We're all making a difference. My name's Willen and I'm seven years old. I'm Alistair, I'm Willen's dad and we live in Melbourne. I'm a Gunai Yorta Yorta Gunditjmara man and this is Wurundjeri land that we're on. For Willen, I, I just want him to grow up and be the best person he can be. So I want him to be a strong, healthy Aboriginal man with the same access to health the same ability to be healthy, have opportunities in employment, opportunities to be educated without worrying about it or having stress about those everyday life things that maybe other people take for granted. But I just want him to be happy as long as he's happy and for him to learn off his elders, off all his grandparents and to get an understanding of who he is, who his people are, I think that's really important. I like spending time with my dad. Usually we play basketball and sometimes we just kick the footy. The work that Aboriginal people have done in health has been huge. Our people are hard workers in this area and I think there's a lot to learn there from our mob. The Aboriginal Health Service in Victoria was started in 1973. I think there was a need there for our community to actually provide that. If you go back to that time, we still had a divide in people so there was a lot of discrimination. Aboriginal people were fearful of the history of this country, of what's happened. All that impacts down to the community. You're fearful of using services at times. We're still feeling that today. We've got to keep on building on repairing it and to be able to maintain our identity and who we are, because that's what makes you Aboriginal, is your culture and your family and our tradition, our heritage. We can't lose that. If we lose that, there's no point closing the gap. So places like Will and School and Victoria Stars Football Club, they actually incorporate Aboriginal culture into how they operate and what they're doing and how they try and educate people. So we can get more of that happening across mainstream services. I think it's only going to help Aboriginal people get better. Close the gap's been great for the last seven years, but we've got a long way to go and we still need it there. So if we can get more support from the general community to be able to help us help ourselves. I think every change is going to make a difference.
I think it's everybody's responsibility. You need to play a part in this. You need to help our mob and our people and, um, and support us and get behind us and make sure that these programs and this funding is available for our people because we need it. If we're going to close the gap, we need everybody's support. Help us close the gap.